Your kindness fills my life. Your love amazes me. And I sing because you are good. And I dance because you are good. And I shout because you are good. You are good to me. Yo quiero verte, 
Yo quiero verte y contemplar tu majestad y el resplandor de tu gloria. Derrama tu amor y poder cuando cantamos santo, santo y contemplar tu majestad y el resplandor de tu gloria. Derrama tu amor y poder cuando cantamos. Santo, Santo Y say holy Holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy I want to see you Oh, Santo Santo, Santo, Santo Tú eres Santo Santo, yo quiero verte. To see you high, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Won't you pour out your power of love as we sing, holy, 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 y contemplar tu majestad y el resplandor de tu gloria. Derrama tu amor y poder cuando cantamos Santo, Santo. Aleluya. We praise you, Lord. We give you praise. We worship you, God. Te adoramos, Señor. closes in you are pure. you are hope you have covered all my sin your peace you are peace you are peace when my fear is crippling you are true you are true even in my wandering You are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life, in you death has lost its sting. Jesus 
Set the atmosphere.
Tell them to take to leave a message, please. Easy, it's not that funny. Praise the Lord. Lift up your hands, 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 lift up your hands. Just worship him. Just worship him for a few minutes. Worthy of all the glory and all the honor. All the glory and all the honor. All the glory and all the honor. We bless your holy name in this place. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you, Lord, for your, the cross. and Thank you for tonight. Thank you for tonight and the opportunity to be able to gather together in this place. And to be able to lift up your glorious and awesome name. I know tonight, Lord, as, as in the physical, as in the physical, it rained and stormed and it came down heavy. I believe tonight, for the physical precedes the spiritual. For your word says that, teaches us. First, the physical, Adam, Old Testament. Spiritual, Jesus, second Adam. Ah, praise the Lord. So I believe tonight your people are hungry, they're thirsty. 
Some are in this room with the spirit of something has to give, something has to change. I can't, I can't go on anymore like this. I can't leave this place the same way I came in. I need a touch. I need an encounter. I need a breakthrough. I need a miracle. I, I need healing. I need restoration. I need a breakthrough. In other words, as the rain came down earlier tonight, I believe in the Spirit. You're going to do the same here in the next few minutes in this place. To touch, to heal, to restore, to deliver, to fill, to strengthen. For your word decrees and declares, blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Bless your people tonight, I pray. Bless them, help them. Touch us, Lord, tonight. For your word says, draw an eye to me and I'll draw an eye to you. And as they press through tonight, where it would have been easy to stay home tonight, but they press through on a Saturday night. With rain coming down, storming all over the place. There's people in this room like, man, I need to get to church. No matter what, I, 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 and in the midst of it, Lord, I know there's people in this place that are going through some stuff. Pressure, stress at high levels, trials, tribulations, pressure from all directions. But in their heart, they're like, I'm still going to go to church. I'm still going to lift up his name. I'm still going to lift up his awesome name. I'm still going to give honor to the one that saved my life. I'm still going to lift up his name. I'm still going to lift up his name in the midst of what, even when I don't understand what's going on. Because it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about him. You know when the pressure gets turned up? When the pressure gets turned up? See, it's easy to say the right things, to do the right things when everything's good. To praise them, to smile, everything's going, everything's, everything's, I mean, everything's just lining up. And, but how about when the pressure's turned up a little bit? How about when things aren't going the way you want them to go? And most of the time, when they're not going the way you want them to go, they weren't supposed to go that way. God had, some, he had another plan, another way. But our stubbornness. But what do you do when you don't get your way or it's not going the way you want it to go or you don't understand. See, it's easy to lift up and still come to church. How about when it's not, are you still showing up? Are you still, because that's when you realize, is it about you or is it about the Lord? If you're coming to church for a person, if you're coming to church because this is what, your position or something, if you're not coming to church to make a name for yourself or to, or like I said, to, to, to try to meet somebody, or you're coming to church because your identity it's not in Christ, but it's in the thing you do. And, and all of a sudden now you think you got a relationship, but all it is is just. You're coming to church for the wrong reason. You're not coming. Listen, I don't. Bottom line is if God never answered another prayer. Hey, if God never answered another prayer that you prayed. Even though we know that's impossible when we do it the right way and we cry out to the Lord. Isn't it still enough? Would it still not be enough to still show up yes. and still praise him yes. and still give him honor yes. and still lift up his name yes. 
until he comes or takes you home. For once we were going to hell, now we're on our way to heaven. Just that alone is enough. Or is our attendance in church, is our attendance in our Christianity reduced to if God is if God's blessing me and elevating me and promoting me and opening up doors, then I'm going to praise Him more. I'm going to show up more and do more. But when, when, but, but, but when it seems like I'm not getting, or I'm not getting blessed, or it seems like I'm not getting the, the what I want sometimes, or the blessings, or um, um, so if I, so is that what our Christian? Then I'm not. Then it's going to be. Then I'm not going to. Then I'm not going to be showing up or. Or better yet, if you're going through something and then you're crying out to God, we have to fix ourselves a little bit, amen? Straight up. Go to church and it's like, and we're coming and it's like, and we're, we're going through something, and then God answers the prayer. God elevates. God increases. God, you know, victory. And then all of a sudden, we're not, we're not worshiping. We're not coming as we did before. We're not. Is that what, is that, is that the way, is your, is my, you, your worship and my worship dictated and connected? Is the next step to our worship, when we worship him, connected to if God blesses us or not? Or better yet, when God answers, then we don't need him as much. Is that, is that who, have we reduced the one that shed his blood? Have we reduced our Savior, our Christianity? To the gifts we can get? Are we after the gifts? that we can get from the giver? Are we after the giver of the gifts? What in the world? When we pray, when we worship, we come to church, when we serve, yeah, this is when it counts. This is when it counts. When there's a rainstorm and you still and people are going through stuff and still showing up. Don't talk to me when everything's going great and everything's up. talk to me when everything's going crazy. There's a storm outside, all hell's breaking loose at home, and I'm still showing up. Shout that's me. You're saying consistent. You know what you're telling everybody? I'm not here for you. I'm not doing this for you. I'm here for the one that saved me. I'm here for the one that delivered me and has kept me. Because I know who's kept me. I'm here. We're about to lift up his name. And say thank you for what he's done. Thank you for protecting me and keeping me and being faithful when I wasn't faithful he remained faithful for being patient with me come to church you should go come to church not to be heard acknowledged pat on the back if you're coming to church yeah I'm coming to church because if I don't show up the church is going to fall apart they really need me what being given an opportunity and it's a privilege watch this, there's a couple things that are in my spirit right now God's going to bless you here tonight some people here that press through tonight and God's going to do something special for you tonight comes to the things of God, it's not like regular, when we're, we're here to serve, it's a privilege to serve.
God's placed me somewhere, people are, things are going to happen, but I'm still going to come. I'm not going to bail out of somewhere. Because a lot of times we run we, when we don't, or people, or we get offended. And, and I mean, it's real. We get hurt. But, but again, I'm not here, so you can say whatever you want. I'm showing up because I know I'm supposed to be here. And, 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 and I'm thankful for what he's done for me. My life is not my own. And when I don't, I, if I don't show up, it's, and I've been, and I'm going to tell you, in many, many of us in this room, there's some people want to quit here tonight. I've wanted to quit many times the last couple years. But the word was, you know how many lives God has called you to? And if you quit, how much damage it would do to those people? Now, I'm not God. He's God. But making myself unavailable and quitting, how it would affect. That would be the highest form of selfishness. So you show up. We all show up. We all do our part. We invite people. We can, we don't, all of a sudden I stop inviting people to church because of my fear or something happened. That lets me know where someone's at. That something should never change no matter what. And when they do, that lets me know what's up with the person a little bit. Because when you love God, no matter what you want, you still stay consistent. Yeah. When you love God, let me mess you up. I'm going to say this, and I'm, we're going to do one thing when I'm done. Look at somebody say, he's done. Look at it and look at somebody and say, not yet, though. What I'm trying to say, I don't know why, because we want to do, there's two, because it's a word right now. Sometimes we get stuck also where we're at, and it's years later, and we don't understand why we have not been able to go to the next level. You will not graduate to go to the next level until you pass the test that you're in right now. I know that one well. Where you're at now and how you're handling the moment you're in right now, God is saying, will dictate promotion or lack of it. The new door opening up or lack of door opening up. How you handle, how you humble yourself. Because when you're faithful with the little things, God will give you more. God won't give you more until you can see that you can handle what's been given to you right now. For example, you've heard me say this many times. We, we, we have a job that's in the world, right? And we take the time to call up the job and let them know when, we come, when we're sick. We at least, we call. And that's the job that, 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 that watches, that didn't die for you. Didn't say, actually God provided that job to help you. But we call. Not coming in. We come to church, want to work, do something for God, but then later on, we're supposed to be somewhere. You've told somebody that you're going to do something. It could be up on the worship. It could be in the bookstore. It could be in the sound. It could be the cameras. It could be the, 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 the kids' ministry. Anyway, and you know, and then all of a sudden, we don't have, we don't even, and we, we wonder why we get stuck. I'm just like, re shout, I receive this. We don't understand why we can't go any further, why we don't have breakthrough. Wait a second. We can't even, we, this is God's house and for God's people. And something comes or whatever, and we can't even pick up the phone and let somebody in leadership know that I'm not going to be there. And we show up. Same people are giving you a headache. From, uh, I, I want to work, I want to work, I want to help, I want to help. And then when something doesn't go your way, all of a sudden, you don't even get a phone call on you, and it's like, ah, let them figure it out. Oh, really? You're not saying, let me figure it out or anybody. You're telling God. You're, you're, who you think you're hurting? You're not hurting the building or the person or the pastor. Right? You know who you're impacting and hurting? You're grieving the heart of God and, and hurting a soul. That if you are where you need to be, because now if something needs to be closed down or changed, 
that can be the difference of life and death in someone's life. handle the small things will dictate the increase how you handle the small things will dictate the increase now, where did that come from oh okay praise the Lord how you handle the small things we want all the big stuff we want all this we want that and we can't even how are you handling where you're at right now. Being on time. Did you hear what I said? Little things, little things, little things. Because if God's going to bring and elevate you, He wants to see that He can trust you. How are you handling your finances? He wants to give you more. You're like, man, Lord, yeah, but you're not handling the finances you have right now well. So it's going to hurt you if he gives you what he wants to give you in the future. It'll crush. It, it can destroy you if you're not if you're not if you're not prepared and you're you're you're, you're not you haven't passed that test. Watch this. Watch this. Just real quick, and we're going to just worship. Him. Lou, why don't you come out as I'm looking for this real quick? You had, you had a couple minute testimony. You said right. Two minutes. 120 seconds. Well, what I'm about to testify is exactly what he's saying. There's times when you're tempted so bad that you you got to give up. I'm giving up. This is it. I can't take it anymore. That happened one day. The next day you come to church whether you want to or not because there's a drawing. The Holy Spirit is saying in your heart, don't give up. I got you covered. I got you covered for the appropriate time. And that rings in my heart and in my mind. There's times I go through, you know what. But why not? Now I'm going to give you a, a testimony. Last Tuesday before the last, I came to church. You know, I take my usual shower and shave and walk around the house and with no shoes on. Put my socks and shoes on, come to church, walking around, doing my thing, and went home, walked around, went to the store, come home, started to retire for the night, took my shoes off, took my socks off, and I felt something at the end of the sock. I said, how did that get there? So I pull it out. It was a razor blade. Now just think what that razor blade could have did to my foot. Not one cut. So that's worth hanging on to. Because you're going to go through trials and don't quit because there's an end to the rainbow. Thank you. Amen. Consistent. Past week has been difficult for him. Here he is tonight. It would have been easy to be at home. I know one thing for sure. Car wouldn't start tonight. Had some other things going on this past week, physically. And then his car tonight. Do you understand? Do you understand? And one thing I know though, since the first time Luke came to right now, you 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 know, we all go through stuff, we have our moments. But what I what I the way I met you and your spirit that you had when I first met you is the same way you are today. Consistency. Doesn't mean he's perfect. I mean, he's had his moment. But I mean, but overall, though, consistent. You, you, you can count on someone like this. See, God's looking for people that he can trust. And he loves us. And he, and he wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed. God wants to, God wants to bring increase into your life more than you want the increase in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm saying something right now. God wants to do more in your life than you want it to be done in your life. He's not trying to take something from you. He's trying to help you. But if he was to do or release or bless or do something in your life right now prematurely and you're not ready for it, it would hurt you.
It can take you out. It can get you to go back to where you were. Did you hear what I just said? Some of us right now, this broken place that you're at, this place where you've been humbled, where things have been stripped away from your life, does anybody know what I'm saying and talking about? What you think is the worst thing is actually a blessing in disguise. It's a word for somebody right now. The thing you think is the worst thing you're going through is actually the greatest thing you're going through. It's a blessing in disguise. Everything that's been stripped away, taken, and now that you're in a low, where it seems like, man, you, you, you're, you, you, you're, you, you, You've been limited with and, and, and finances and, and, and uncomfortable where the lifestyle you had before and what you had around you. But when you had it all like that, it had you bound up. And, and if it wasn't for God's grace, you shouldn't even be here right now. That stuff, all the stuff, the busyness, the money, all of it. Where you lost it all, best thing that could ever happen. Why? Because now it's caught your attention. Because if you would have kept on going the way you were going, you weren't coming back. Destruction. Well, I know that's real. And we're trying to push away and the, actually the blessing instead of embracing the moment. Because right now, God's trying to get your attention, my attention, to correct some things in our lives, some cycles, some areas that haven't been dealt with for years. So come to church, you feel a little bit better, but if we don't work on certain things, those things are still there. If I don't learn how to handle money the right way, I'm going to get back into trouble. If I don't learn how to humble myself and continue to operate with the spirit of pride, before man's fault comes pride, then eventually it's going to bring destruction again. So here we are. God brings us to a place to humble us, to, 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 to get us... To get our attention. But watch this. But the Bible says, humble thyself. You have to make that choice. Lord, humble me, humble me, and give me a spirit of humbleness. No, 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 no. You need to wake up every single morning and have this prayer. Lord, I, I, I'm willing. I, 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 I know I'm nothing without you. And, 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 and here's my heart. I'm nothing. I know apart from you, I can do nothing. But with you, I can do all things. Help me, Lord God. Deliver me from the spirit of pride or whatever. Whatever that thing might be. And you humble yourself. When you're right, you still turn the other cheek. Yeah. When you're not turning the other cheek, still trying to get the last word in. You still you're, you're still got issues. Are you in this place? No, man, you're looking at me like what? No, like what? That's why a service like tonight, God brings us to a place so He can get our attention because we to get to clear our minds so we, we can think again and and now we can look and say okay this is what i need help with i'm still struggling here i need deliverance here and then we have altar calls where god starts to move and the bible says turn to me in the day of trouble and i will deliver and you honor me and then but see sometimes see but sometimes see see it takes getting to a place where you've been stripped of everything to get you to a place to be able to come to these altars and don't care about anybody else what they're thinking about because now in the church you know here here watch this because some of you are still stuck because you're still worried about what people will think and say of you. You, you hear me carefully. People on stages. Because we all have issues. But I'm a leader. What are they going to say if I get on my knees and ask for prayer? Pass that. We do that behind the scenes with, you know, only other leaders can pray for. It's like, whatever. See, if you have that mentality, you're not going to fulfill the greatness God's called you to. Some of us up here, I'm not saying right now, but I'm saying in general, all, 
There's times where you need to be at these altars. Hey, you need to be at it. But I'm just like, no, I'm saying, no, no, put the mic down sometimes. Sometimes you got to put the mic down and go to the altar. Look at somebody say straight up. Yeah. You want to be free? You want to be healed? It's a, sometimes it's a process. And I, what I've learned is when you get to these altars, turn to me in the day of trouble. Lord, help me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, get this craziness out of me. Get this anger out of me. Get this pride out of me. Get this lust out of me. Are you in this place? But I, but, we, but, so we get to a place where we're stripped, which is a blessing in disguise, because now it's like, man, you know, when you're broken, things you used to worry about, you really don't care, because all you, you just want it, man, you just want peace back in your life. You just want to have a good night's rest. worried about stuff you just want to make sure you're right with God you want peace in your heart and you realize my God what I thought about myself and the things I thought I knew I now I realize because some of you in this place are with me on this one God just had that revelation not too long ago it's been a while now about a year or so Okay, yeah, still working. The things I thought I knew about ministry and church and everything over all these years, I realized I didn't know anything. Uh, yeah, I'm messing somebody up right now. And I realize now I'm learning what this is about. Really what it's about. I said really what it's about. That there, Even though I've, I've cried out for people and for souls, but no, 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 no. But it's really that we don't give up on anybody. And, 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 it's, and truly that there's people out there that we have these services but you know what we can't give up on anybody we got to stay with it just because you realize what you've been through you wouldn't be where you're at if some people didn't stick with you yeah you start to realize you start to realize what this is about it's about the hurting the poor the afflicted addicted and lost and we always say it in here but no but really really what it's and it's not and i'm going to share here the message about the one where jesus left uh, when there was 99 and left the 99 to go after the one that had left listen listen that's what it's about and it's not picking and choosing your moments it's when it's uncomfortable when it's not easy when when you're tired when you're when, when things aren't going right you're still there, there's a compassion to go after the one Come in and play in church and just showing up and when it's convenient we're having our altar calls when it's convenient i'm going to help somebody when it's convenient i'm going to make the phone calls when it's convenient i'm going to go out of my way to pick up no if that's if staying consistent with it and understanding what a phone call will do for somebody well, well, well going back to somebody saying forgive me Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. And Jesus was right. Yeah, that's how. It's not about making a name of our, for ourselves, right? It's about, and there's people still in here that still don't get it. You're still trying to, you think, you're still trying to, the titles, the, the name the, the, that goes along with, with your, the gift that God's given you. If you're sincere about reaching people, you got to get delivered from that. I've realized now the things I thought I knew. I don't know nothing. I'm just learning now. It's about the people. And it's always been about the people here, but still, but still there's there's still, I don't know how to explain. There's just a greater compassion and understanding for the hurting out there. Like never before. But but that happened. When I went through a stretch that was so uncomfortable, pressure, brokenness at the highest levels, and I'm thankful for it now. Watch me. But see how you respond and how you handle the moment. Do you embrace it? Or are you pushing it away? Are you embracing the correction or are you running away from the correction? Embrace the correction. Love the correction. Thank God for the correction. It's just great. Embrace it. Love it. It's good for us. It's 
So I look back now. I just realize, bottom line is, I'm better because of it. I understand more because of it. Things I thought that really matter really don't matter at all. Stuff that I thought were important aren't important at all. I'm trying to encourage somebody that right where you're at right now, if you respond the right way, could be the greatest altar of your life. Because off of this altar, this season of your life, it can push you and propel you into the greatness that God's called you to. If you respond the right way. Or it can have you going around the same cycle and another year goes by. Get delivered from what people think in here sometimes. Some people have been in church for a long time, worry about like, okay, what are they going to think? Like, well, if they're going to think there's something wrong with me if I'm at the altar, and I'm the one that was kind of like they've been looking up to. Let me let me help you with me, as a, as a pastor, so I can help somebody else. So maybe it'll freeze to come to the altar tonight, and maybe a leader or somebody that's not even a leader, just kind of that's over some kind of ministry or whatever you want to call it. Things, you know what I mean? I mean, I've been in this for a long time. I'm going to shock you. I'm not perfect. He's the perfect one. I've just been called, chosen to do this. And I've made myself available. And I haven't quit. Almost, but haven't. And now I'm stronger because of it. Wiser because of it. The things I've, but the point I'm trying to make is I still, God's working doing stuff in my life I still struggle with certain things I, there's still stuff that tries to come back and get me sometimes, are you hearing what I'm saying? this is an everyday thing, this isn't all of a sudden you get saved and all of a sudden okay now I'm a pastor, now everything and I got a hold of this and I've arrived and now I'm good are you kidding me? the more we go forward the crazier it is, the crazier I am the crazier I am, the crazier it is. The more that God does, the more I want to quit sometimes. And that, and the more that I need to be at the altar, the more I need help, the more I need people to pray. That's why I say, when I'm in here and I say, pray for me. And it was like, oh yeah, he's just saying to be nice. No, I need prayer. People would see, oh, I see on TV. I go, do me a favor. Make sure you're praying for me. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you don't understand. I need you to pray. But I can't do this. It's the Lord, but I need people to help. I need people's prayers. I need people's encouragement. For real. That'll, that's liberating, by the way. Someone needs to hear this right now. Embrace. Embrace your moment right now. It's not a bad thing. It's a, it's a great thing. Because God's getting your attention. Some of you, you, your mind is being cleared up from all the stuff. You know what I mean. The stuff. The lifestyle. The drugs. Little by little, you're starting to come to your senses and now God's getting your attention and now he's starting to show you things you need to work on because of what he wants to do in your life and he hasn't given up on you he's with you he hasn't forsaken you he's just been waiting for you to come back and now he's like okay we need to work on this and work on because the, what I've graced you with and what I've gifted you with because I've graced you and there's some great there's greatness there's some talent in this room where the enemies tried to continue, take you out and steal from you over the years such talent such greatness and where God wants to place you in the platform he wants to give you in the future but th some things need to be tightened up Character needs to be worked on a little bit. Character. Character. Our character. 
consistency, commitment, the little things. I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, the love that's behind why we do what we do. We want to be in mission. We want to do something great. Yeah, but, but, you, but God's saying, listen, I, I've graced you, and you've got everything you need, and it, I've given it to you, but you got to have love behind what you're doing. you got to have my heart. I'll say it again, please, you guys. When we're saying we're quitting, we're representing God, we got to represent God with love. His love for people. Understanding for people. Patient with people that he, he died for. We got to be patient with one another just the way he was patient for you and me. Watch this. Just real quick, I'm just and we're gonna just get us some. I'm gonna get us some. Okay, so Second Kings, chapter three, and just go to. Fourteen. I'm just. We're gonna worship, and we're gonna have an altar call. God's gonna do something. According, to, he, I was gonna share this at Teen Chat earlier today, but there was a, a storm hit out there. They were doing a backpack thing, and people. It was a couple thousand people out there. It's pretty cool. They were doing something. Around. I was about to go on saying they're like, man, the wind, the storm. Like, well, Pastor, it doesn't look like you're gonna speak. You know, <laughs> well, they were gonna give me a couple. I go, maybe we just need to get them going you know and thank god like a few minutes later man things were flying around and everything i mean it, it was crazy i mean and then and then sheila my wife it's like she almost flew i'm a grab her i'm like and i saved her from like and then it's like something came flying this way and i went in front of her and i took the hit thank you you see me limping around or anything like a little bit like that, it's because I, you know, I took some, because it's not about me, it's about him, the people, and my wife now. <laughs> but I was going to go to this story briefly, but that what's, but as we're driving over here, it, this keeps coming to my, to my, to, to, to my, in my spirit. Elijah said, because of what, right now, the wind, physical procedure, spiritual, Elijah said, as surely, and you've heard me say this before, but watch it. Elijah said, as surely as the Lord Almighty lives, whom I serve, if I did not have uh, respect for the presence of Jehovah, the king of Judah, I would not look at you or even notice you. Verse 15. But now bring me a harpist. While the harpist was playing, the harpist, okay, you understand what's happening here? The harpist, the music, the worship, the praise. So the, the man of God says, before we do anything, Let's get, let, let's get in the, because he inhabits the praise of his people. Let's, let's, let's continue to lift up and, the harpist. And while the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. Okay, so while the harpist was playing, while the worship was going up, while we were lifting up the name of, watch this. And this is what's about to happen here as we continue to do this. Because before he, because the, the people of God were about to engage in a battle with the Moabites. And, but they haven't reached their destination for the battle now they're stuck in between the, the um, where they're not where they used to be they've departed they're not where they're supposed to be to engage with the battle with the with the with the, with the Moabites the enemy they're like halfway there and they're all dehydrated and they're, and they're all about to die so they're not dealing with another they're not dealing with the enemy of the Moabites they're dealing with the enemy of dehydration now so now they're about to die and all of a sudden and God God here you are. Some of you are high, you're tired, you're weary. Some of you want to give up in this place. You're, 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 it seems like there's no hope because this was hopeless at this point. They were stuck. It, it, they, they weren't, if God didn't show up supernaturally, they were going to die. This was hopeless. But they're not where they used to be either. See, some of you, let me say, you're not where you used to be. But you're not where God's trying to get you to. But right now, you need God. You need an encounter. You need, can I get a witness? You need, you need, you need God to, you, there's still some stuff. And you've come this far. And, and now you're in this place where it's like, man, Lord, 
I mean, if I'm going to make it, if I'm going to keep on going, you need, to, you need to help me. You need to heal me. You need to restore me. You need to deliver me from me. This chain, this, this addict, this thing that I'm still struggling with, I need a breakthrough. So watch this. And God, here's God's love and mercy. He never leaves for it. He's, in, he's, he's, he's got all by himself. He's still in control. So, <laughs> and before the man of God, because a word comes now to, to, to let them know what's about to happen in the midst of where they're about to, here you are in church. You, you're, 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 you're in a situation. And watch this. And God is saying, I'm gonna, I'm, 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 you're not leaving the same way you came in. You're not, you're not, I got you. While the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came out upon Elijah. Next verse. And he said, this is what the Lord says. Make this valley full, of, valley full of ditches. Okay, the word comes not before the harpist, but after. The instruction. The miracle starts to happen after the harpist starts to play. Once he starts to play, once the worship goes up, the word starts to go forward and things start to happen. Oh, my God. So the instruction is make this place full of ditches. It's crazy, isn't it? But they did it. And he says, it's not going to come from a storm. It's not going to come from rain. But, it, but this place is going to be full of water. Saying, but, but, so get your mind. Do your part, he's what he's saying. So God was telling, after the harp, the instruction, do your part. Do the possible. Do what you can do. Dig some ditches. The water, the miracle, stuff, that's, that's God's. He goes, if you do this, I'll take care of the rest. The water came. And the ditches were filled with water. They were all hydrated. The animals, the people, they went forth and got victory. Do the possible. Tonight, as we start to worship, you know what the possible is tonight? The possible is saying, Lord, I can't, but I know you can. Lord. You know what the possible is today? To humble yourselves and come to him. You know what the possible is today? When we open up these altars, get to the altar. Start to worship him. Do your part. Move. Do something. Get tired. Are you tired? Are you tired? When you look back, don't you want things? It's like enough. Enough of the enemy stealing from me. Enough of the enemy taking from me. Enough stealing my destiny, my greatness. Enough. If you want to see something change, you've got to do something different. You can't keep on being the way you are. You can't keep on functioning the way you are. You gotta get up. Do the possible. You don't run from church, you get to church because you're doing the possible. When we're worshiping, we're lifting up his name. We're not looking around. You want your miracle? You want things to change in your life? Stop looking to the left and stop looking to the right. Crazy as that, man. Coming to church, you know, the real God up there that wants to help you, deliver you, give you healing, and get you moving forward. And knowing that he, he wants to do that, and we come here, and our focus is on something else. And then you go back, and it's too. And it's the same thing, same, same, same insanity, same craziness. Aren't you tired? Possible is getting to the altars. Possible saying, yeah, I am struggling. Telling the Lord, you know what? Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me here because I know it's your grace. Thank you for putting me in the position that I'm in. Thank you. <laughs> that you got my attention. Uh, you got my attention. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, get this stuff out of my life. Forgive me for this. Lord, I'm still struggling with my attitude. I'm still struggling with this lust. I'm still struggling. It's still there. But Lord, I know you're the deliverer. So Lord, here, I call upon your name. I know you're still delivering like you did 2,000 years ago. I know you can do it right now. You just need my availability and my will. And I say your will to be done. Here I am. Set me free. Deliver me. Deliver me from my pride. Deliver me from...
for my mouth of gossip and my murmuring and my complaining and deliver me from my anger. Deliver me from this addiction. Deliver me from this thing that has control over me. And when I leave this place, Lord, that the only thing to have control over my life completely is you. Do you understand that the power of God's here for your victory, for your breakthrough, for your miracle, for the water to come, for your ditches to get filled up, for you to, to, to receive the goodness of God, the power of God, the healing of God, so you can move forward in the battle, so you can be the champion that God's called you to be. Don't you understand in this place that, that, the, that the victory is guaranteed if we continue to trust in him, get ourselves out of the way, continue to follow him. He's going to have the final say. He's going to have the final say in your battle. And guess what? He's undefeated. Amen? Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. Watch this. Lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Yeah, watch what's going to happen in this place right now. Watch what's going to happen here tonight. Watch what's going to happen in this place tonight. Hearts of Lord. Thyself in the sight of the Lord, God says, and I will lift you up. And he's going to get all the glory. Humble. Lord, I can't, but I know you can. Lord, I'm struggling with this unforgiveness, but I know you can. I can't, but here's my heart. Touch it. Do the surgery. Heal my heart. Heal my heart. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Help me, Lord. So I can move forward and be the champion. To be the voice. To be the woman of God that you called me to be. To be the man of God you've called me to be. It's not the way you start. It's the way you finish. Come on. Every one of us in this room, there's time to get this thing going in the right direction. But let's learn from what, let's learn from the past. Let's learn from those past foxholes and battles. Let's learn. Let's humble ourselves. Okay. Thank you, God, for your grace. But, but what is it, what is it that I can learn? What are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to teach me? through this time and this season of my life. There's pressure. He's a what are you trying to teach me? What do I need to learn? Where do I need to grow in this season? Stop looking around you and everybody else and it's everybody else. No. God's trying to speak to you. He's trying to speak to me. Lord, help me. Bitterness, the anger, the pride. So fill me with your love, Lord. Your heart, your heart, your heart to love people. Your heart to represent you. Your heart to forgive and to let go. Your heart to encourage instead of discouraging. 
your heart to be a servant a real servant a real servant for the greatest among them is a servant we got too many people in the church today that are they come in talking about serving 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 but underneath it's full of pride arrogance and attitude true servants you humble yourself and it's like you show up and what what do you need to, for service all of us and we don't complain about it that's the other thing we, we're part of the solution with a good attitude all right praise god i'm gonna be preaching oh pat, pat i'm not doing this what else is there anything else i can do to help tonight i'm here to serve I'm here to serve the house of God. I'm here to serve to reach the people. What do you need from me tonight? With a good attitude. Not serving. Some of us need to be delivered for this and get it right in this area too. Right heart. Right spirit. Lots of love. Good attitude with a smile to serve. And it should be like this. And is there anything else I can do? Did you hear what I said? I mean, and there's many others that are great like this in this church. But I'm going to use Pastor Ron. He's always from the day one. From day one. From day one. When I've asked him to do something, he's always said to me, now I don't know what he does afterwards. He's like, oh man, Pastor's crazy. Why does he have a man? I don't know what he does, but he doesn't do it in front of me. All I know is when I ask him to do something, he goes, is there anything else you need, Pastor? Sometimes it doesn't even concern buses. It doesn't concern transportation. It's got nothing to do with what he does as a pastor. He's the bus pastor. He's the outreach pastor, right? But I asked him to do some other things, and he's never said no to me. Do you know how many people have given me attitude, though, in this place? Or they say, yeah, but they got to tell me how. It's like, my God, by the time he finished, he's like, no, never mind. I'll get somebody out. How much you're doing and this and that and the whole story. God. What I love is, I want this one. If we're going to take over cities, yeah, this is another one. It's got to be an attitude of like, and what else? And you're thinking to yourself, I don't even know how to do this. But the right spirit says, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out because there's a need here. And right now, I, I got some time. So that means I'll go ask 50 other people in the church say, hey, do you know how to do this? Or how to, I need some help. And then get it done. And the pastor, whoever asked you, whatever area within the church, they don't even know what you went through to get it done. Because you don't publicize, look at what I went through to get it done. But the one where it counts the most, God in heaven will reward you on that day. Why are we doing what we're doing? Are we doing it for him? Are we doing it because we're thankful that we wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for him? Come on! Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. There's freedom. Chains are about to break in this place right now. You unravel me with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance yeah yeah from my enemies till all my fears are gone i'm no longer Womb, 
You have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through. area and then there's something else that God shows us we need to work on, right? There's always something. What is an area that I've been working on? Well, I'm like, okay. And you know what? And that's why I feel in my spirit. I know that I'm, I'm, there's people like, that are in this room and in the same place. And where the enemy would say, man, see? Now, nah. that's always going to be there in your life. No, 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 no. Get back up. Get back. Go right back at it again. It's a new day. So tonight, you dare park and settle there there is an answer and his name is Jesus and with him all things are possible I said all things are possible don't you give up as we continue to sing right now if you're struggling with something if there's an, an addiction if there's if it's if it's an area in your heart the deeper things in your heart that you that you know that man God says if you trust him and you call upon him, 
there's breakthrough there's restoration there's victory in that area if you don't want to keep on being that way living that way some things you could try you could do it God can only do it for you there's some things that people we just need some breakthrough we need some deliverance in that area deliverance in that area if you want it tonight for some struggling with lust for others it might be the pride maybe others anger, others an addiction whatever it is you want your victory tonight and I'm speaking to everybody I don't care and you know what even if people are serving somewhere tonight wherever you're at in this church if that's you in the next few minutes as we continue to worship the Lord as you come with your harp then the word came forth to dig the ditches right as you come lifting up his name and trusting him the word is going to flow for deliverance and healing by his stripes you're not going to be healed you are healed and as you come forward burdens are going to be removed and yokes will be destroyed in the next few minutes I said burdens will be removed and yokes will be destroyed and right where you're at at home that's your altar as we worship right now if that's you make your way up to this altar find a place find a place quickly
Jesus. My God. My God, my God, my God, my God. My God, my God, my God. Come on. Come on, get back up. Breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. Lust goes right now in the name of Jesus. Perversion goes right now in the name of Jesus. Hey, do you want to be free? Call upon his name right now and say, Lord, I don't want this anymore. I don't want this anymore. I don't want this anymore. My God, my God, my God, God's doing something right now. I'm telling you, I already know. I don't want this anymore. Perversion goes right now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of suicide. I command you to get your hands off the people of God right now in the name of Jesus. You go right now. It breaks. That spirit of suicide goes right now. Goes right now. It goes right now in the name of Jesus. It goes right now in the name of Jesus. It goes right now in the name of Jesus. Now. 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 Watch it all. Now it goes. Just like the prodigal son, he came to his senses. Lord, bring your people back to their senses to come back home and to be the champions who call them to be in the name of Jesus. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Shut that yellow light.
come on, come on, come on, come on. Whoa. I believe in you. Do you? Do you? I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. My healer. My deliverer. My restorer. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you. The God of miracles. And you be on the story, Lord. I'm the one who does impossible. Is reaching out to make you whole, reaching out to make you whole. The one who put death in its place, his life is flowing through my veins. His life is flowing through my veins. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of me. I believe in you, I believe in you, you're the God of miracles, I believe in you, I believe in you, you're the God of miracles. the God of miracles, you're the God of miracles, I believe in you, I believe in you, you're the God of miracles, I believe in you, I believe in you, you're the God
up your hands. Come up. Just worship him. Continue playing the harp. Continue playing. Yeah, the harp. That's the worship. That's the worship. That's the worship. That's the worship. God's doing it. Even if I'm not praying for you, if I don't lay hands on you, God's doing it. He's speaking the word for you. You just need to receive it. All you need to do is receive it. Receive it. For your glory. For your glory, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're the God.